What's the harm in silence? It could be relaxing, it could be soothing, but it could also be devastating. What if Martin Luther King Jr. was silent? What if Gandhi was silent? What if Malala was silent all because they were too scared to speak up? And it shouldn't be that surprising because according to psychology today, public speaking is feared by people more than death. <laughs> Hi, I'm Issei Matsumura and guess who this is? <laughs> that's right, that's me. <laughs> but only on the outside. On the inside, I was a completely different person then. And that's because behind this smile in this photo, I had a fear a severe fear of talking to strangers. It didn't have to be a crowd, just one stranger was enough to overwhelm me. But that all changed in a moment when I was nine. And I still remember that moment very clearly. My heart was racing at that time. I couldn't believe I was doing it. My palms were drenched with sweat and I had a hard time getting a grip on my script. The teacher asked the class, are there any volunteers to go first? And at that moment, suddenly, nothing. My heart was normal, my palms were normal. It felt like a lightning hit me as my right arm shot up on its own. I remember just a few days before, my parents took me to a golf driving range in the cold fog of the morning. Immediately after getting off our car, my mother crouched to meet my eye level. You see that reception over there? She said, pointing at a man behind the counter. I want you to go over there and ask the man for 50 golf balls. Here, give him this. She took out some cash and tried to hand it to me, but instead of taking it, I sat down on the spot. No, I said. You know, all you have to do is ask. No, I replied. You have to get over your fear of talking to people or else you're going to struggle in the future, she said. I don't care, I replied. After an hour of my parents trying to convince me, they ended up taking me home. The disappointment of my parents were in their sighs that came out every minute as they sat with me in the car. A few days later, my teacher announced the upcoming student council election. No way, I thought. No way am I giving a speech in front of my entire class. There's just no way. However, somewhere in my head, I wasn't sure where, but somewhere, there was a part of me thinking about the time at the golf club and all the countless similar events that had happened to me. There was a part of me deep inside that wondered why I couldn't talk to people, that wanted to get over it, that was so frustrated in myself for not being able to do such a simple thing that everyone could do. I felt it. It was small at first, but it gradually amplified itself to an explosion. It felt like there was a war going on inside me, a war between my fear and my deep thoughts. The war eventually had a winner. Teacher, I said, sign me up. Now I was about to give a speech in front of my entire class, but what happened to my fear? All of a sudden, I was just hit with the feeling that told me, I could totally do this. My hand went up on its own and volunteered to go first like someone had tied a string to it and was controlling it. That was the most mysterious moment of my life. And after that, even during the speech, I didn't feel anything. In fact, the applause of my classmates and the attention I was getting felt nice. I went on to win the election, but at first I wasn't even happy because I was still trying to figure out what was going on. I rushed home to tell my mother about the strange feeling I got, and she told me words that I'll never forget. She told me, maybe that was her true self breaking out of the cage you had been trapped in. Those words really echoed in my head. That was it. I was now a different person than the person at the golf club or the person I was. This was my true self. My true self was not afraid to talk to people at all, but rather enjoys it. 
It felt like I was being held back with chains all this time, and I was just set free. These words also led me to questions that I still ask myself every day, like, am I actually me? Are there more characteristics of my true self that I still don't know about? I know I will continue to ask myself these questions and will continue to look for and get as close to who I really am as possible. And I encourage everyone, you, 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 everyone, to do the same when you're met with bumps on the road, to push yourself over it. And if you find out that those bumps are part of who you are, then fine, take a step back. But just remember that silence has consequences, that inaction is the biggest threat, because what awaits after those bumps might be just what you were looking for the entire time. After all, if you can't be yourself, then who can be? Looking in the rearview mirror, the biggest road bump that I overcame is my fear of talking to people, or more accurately, the quest from whoever this boy is over here to me, the real me. Thank you.